Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us for this post-debate edition of The Factor, live. Two hours of verbiage from Milwaukee. Did anything important happen? Any of the candidates help or hurt themselves? Any new things put on the table? We'll address all of those questions with some of the best political analysts in the business this evening. Begin with a guy who I think is perhaps the smartest evaluator of political musings in the entire country. Charles Crowdhammer joins us from Washington. Now, I should full disclosure say that you wouldn't stay up late unless I said that, but uh, it's true. Well, that and the small amount that you deposited in my Cayman Islands account. <laughs> right. So which, will, kinda... which, by the way, Ted Cruz is going to get back, so uh, you better spend it now. All right, what's the headline of the debate, uh, in your opinion? I think the headline is substantive debates tend to be less exciting. Uh, and what we got was a pretty substantive debate. We got, and the, even the intramural arguments were mostly about policy rather than personal stuff. So I thought in a way it was a step up, but it's true, it's less exciting than a, a cage fight. But nonetheless, I think a few things came out. The guy with the most at stake was Jeb Bush. Unfortunately for him, he had another weak night. I don't want to, you know, kick him around, but it was not what he needed to do. On one of the, his questions, he gave an answer. Then uh, Fiorina followed up with a smashing, sort of out of the park answer on the same question. And there was a split screen with Bush kind of nodding his head, encouraging her. What question was, was that? A good the, visual. What question was that? I think the it remember? had to do. I think it had to do with Russia. Uh, the 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 others I thought were relatively weak were Kasich uh, and uh, Carson. Um, although I don't think that Carson sort of hurt himself. He was still. In persona, he had a nice deflecting remark right, earlier. Let, let me challenge. Let me challenge. So, uh, first of all, Kasich said a lot of things. Uh, he had a lot of airtime, but he fell back on the old Ohio thing, and Bush stayed yeah. away from that. All right, and then you know people have a tune, tendency to tune out. It's Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. So I don't. I think he was a neutral. Ben Carson vanished. He just vanished. Um, now I don't know whether that was the fault of the moderators, but he just didn't have a lot of questions directed to him. And the one that he fumbled was macroeconomics, which the doctor right. is not an expert in. They asked him a macroeconomics question, would you break up the big banks? And he's totally clueless. So right. I agree with you, he didn't have a good night at all. And look, the reason that he sort of vanished was not the moderators, it's that all the others, or just about all the others, would intervene uh, and make themselves, push themselves into yeah, the Yeah, he didn't do that at all. But if you're weak on policy, you're not going to intervene. You're going to sort of stand back. Do so you want to hide? But you know who didn't intervene very much? Donald Trump. He, he exactly. didn't say a lot of, you know, we're going we're gonna to have the exact tally of how many, how many minutes everybody talked. But, but Trump, he was kind of there in the old, uh, you know, things that have worked for him, he said. But he didn't intervene that much. No, he didn't. I don't think it depends on the amount of airtime. It depends on the force of what you said. And if you get into a one-on-one, -on -one, how you come out. Look, I think he was the only one who got booed. That remark you made about uh, Fiorina, why are you always interrupting? Uh, and he had a kind of very dismissive remark about Kasich. Uh, I've got a big business. Why should I take this from you? Uh, you know, he did his usual thing about China. But I thought the zinger of the night, it didn't get a lot of applause. But he went on and on about the free trade agreement and China stealing our, our, our lunch and uh, there's no nothing in the agreement on currency manipulation and Rand Paul just said one simple line China is not a part of that trade, the trade agreement. treaty right I mean it's irrelevant so what Trump did is he went to his strong suit on I think what was essentially an irrelevancy I'm not sure he hurt himself I don't think he did he seems never to hurt himself in terms of the polls. No, but you want to, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, with all of these debates now, and, and with all of the, uh, of, the, of the weeks that we have been paying attention, you want to have momentum. You, you, you have to build. You have to build momentum. And it looked to me that Donald Trump didn't really build momentum tonight. I think you would agree with that, correct? Yeah, I think he's both sitting on his lead and sitting right. on his The two his guys did build momentum tonight, and tell me if I'm wrong, are Rubio and Cruz. Well, Rubio had his usual stellar night. It's simply amazing. There's no subject on which he is not fluid and forceful and passionate. I mean, look, how sincere it is, I'll leave to others. But he comes out as somebody who cares. He's able to, to turn 
the questions around and make them very forceful. So as usual, I think he led the field. Uh, I thought Fiorina did very well. And Rand Paul, who takes the most unpopular positions, Rubio called him an isolationist, I thought he had a good night. He's defending positions that are not mainstream. You know, withdraw from the foreign policy stuff. He talked the about Charles. the Fed, I thought a little bit too much. But it was the one night that I thought he did better Charles. than if one he, would have expected. Yeah, come on. I mean, if you're going to stand up there and say, we can't spend money on the military in the age of terror, which is exactly what the senator did. Oh, we can't spend money on the military. You're not a conservative if you want to spend money on the military. That killed him. That just wiped Look, he's, him I don't, out. I think he was up seven against one on this issue. As I say, it's not a mainstream but position. But that's a big deal. It is a yeah, but it's what he believed, and I thought he carried it off fairly well, given the fact that it is I'm outside get, the mainstream. He'll drop to three percent, I predict. He's not going to get anything yeah, out of this. Conservative Americans want a strong defense, and Rand Paul, time after time, looks weak on it. And he, he can be articulate and weak at the same time, Charles. Well, you can be. You, we're talking about. Who did well in the debate is a matter of debate. I can't predict how public opinion will react. I can. I suspect that, well, of course, because you are, a, you, you're both a seer and a simple I man. I am. Karnak. An amazing, an amazing combination, <laughs> never seen before. So, in that sense, yes, you can tell true. which way it's going to go. All right. Now, now I thought um, it was Rubio, Fiorina, and Cruz, maybe. The only person that we didn't mention very much. Uh, no, we got them all. We got them all in. Um, so you say the loser tonight is Jeb Bush because he had to do something, right. had to create a moment, and he didn't. 30 seconds. Look, I think this is basically what we've seen in all the debates. Rubio, Fiorina, the more glib ones, Cruz. Again, I throw in Rand Paul because he hasn't had a good night until now. Uh, and I think you, treading water were Trump and Carson. You got what you expected. Uh, Kasich, I don't think, helped himself terribly much although he had a lot of air time. And as I say, when you talk about substance and you don't make artificial fights, it's a bit more of a snoozer, but I think it really, it's, it's a more, it's a better way to do our politics than the cage fight. So I think it was a good night overall. And the, and the, the moderators, I thought, asked really good yeah, questions. So did I. They, did, they did not intrude themselves, and it was a very good contrast between the two financial networks. Absolutely. You know, the Fox professionalism of Fox Business um, so, as opposed to the ideology of CNBC. All right, so Charles. the undisputed winner, Fox Business Network. All right, you can go to bed now. I know you have your jammies close by, and we appreciate you staying up. Next on the Rundown.